Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. Welcome to Radio A and B, designed for those who want to live a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker, your host, and someone who's been in the beauty industry for over 40 years. Radio A and B, which stands for American Made Beauty, is a place where we tell the secrets behind the making of health and beauty uh, products. The segment sponsor for today's program is AmericanMadeBeauty.com, a beauty platform designed to help consumers find beauty companies that are implementing the industry's best practices to bring you quality products and services. Go to AmericanMadeBeauty.com to find beauty products that serve uh, and services that meet a strict sta- a set of standards that reflect your American heritage. As we enter the second week of the Olympics, with Americans taking home over 60 Olympic medals so far, I'm overwhelmed with pride and the elements of our society that cultivates champions. I'm inspired by the faces of the champions from all over the world that have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of perfection, to breaking records, and to testing their human capacity. If there was an Olympic event, for hair design and aspiring young minds in the art and craft of transforming the professional salon experience, my guest today would rival Michael Phelps as one of the most decorated champions of our sport. We, um, during our uh, feature segment, you'll meet the man who was born to an unsuccessful hairdresser. When his mother met then inspiring young man by the name of Adele Sassoon, Stephen Moody's mother craft of hair design transformed and a legacy began. You'll hear how Stephen was born to hair and today travels the world as the dean of the Wella Global Academy. During our segment called Beauty That Soul Deep, we'll focus on the soul of the customer experience when visiting a professionally trained salon. You'll hear how uh, this can, experience can be transformable at the hands of the properly trained designer. Finally, we'll wrap up our Beauty Biz segment where we'll get Stephen's insight on the status of the industry and his vision for the Wella Global Education Academy. So let's get started by let me tell you a little bit about Stephen. Stephen was born and raised in the U.K., and he joined Vidal Sassoon in 1980 as a Videra and soon opted for, opted for a career in the Vidal Sassoon School and Academies. Stephen has traveled to every corner of the world representing Vidal Sassoon. Having been successful in the U.K. in education, in 87, Stephen was further promoted to principal of the North American Academy in Los Angeles. In 2003, Stephen became international executive director of the Vidal Sassoon Education uh, globally. Stephen is now the current protocol uh, Stephen is now currently uh, Procter & Gamble's Salon Professional Global Education Academy Dean. Stephen creates education resources and supports a team of 800-plus hairstylists and educators who are part of the Wella Global Education Team. Welcome, Stephen. I'm uh, just honored to have you with us today. Patty, I'm super pleased to be on the phone with you, a, a very special friend of mine for many, many years. And um, this is going to be fun. I'm really excited. I am too. I don't quite know how to live up to that introduction. (laughs) Well, I tell you, Stephen, I was really struck when we talked, and you described yourself as the son of an unsuccessful hairdresser until your mother met Vidal Sassoon. I've known you for many years, and um, unsuccessful would not be one of the ways that I would describe anything associated with you. So tell us a little bit about your, your upbringing and how it all began. Well, I think she became successful despite of the circumstances that she was in. Uh, but I think at the time it's fair to say that she was relatively um, unsuccessful creatively. 
and probably more importantly, financially. Right. Uh, my mother had an inkling to do hair, as many people do. I'm sure playing with Barbie dolls and different things like that in a in a formative years. Mm -hmm. And um, as a as a sort of 19, 20 year old, she she opened a hair salon in the front living room of the house. Wow. So she literally transformed what was the front living room into a little hair salon and stuck three hairdressing chairs that didn't match into the front living room. Right. And um, basically made it up as she went along and um, did roller sets, did teasing of hair, um, the Jackie Onassis kind of hairstyles. Right. Beehives, uh, bouffant type of work. And I have to set the stage here, Patty. This is in a very, very, very rural, blue-collar, working-class part of the north of England. Right. And um, did basically coal miners' wives. So you can uh -huh. imagine they weren't super, super on the high end of, of, of haute couture. Right, right. One day she went upstairs, lay down on the bed in the bedroom above the hair salon, and gave birth to me. Oh, my goodness. So um, I, I had the distinct pleasure of being raised in a hair salon, and she couldn't really afford babysitters. She couldn't afford childcare. So I went from client's lap to client's lap as, a, as an infant. So, um, you know, I was raised in the hair salon, Patty. Well, and literally, our, 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 I, I um, titled the show Born to Hair. I didn't really realize how literal that was. <laughs> Literally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was an alcoholic, I think at age two and a half. Apparently, I got into the fridge. Mum used to, to give clients a glass of wine. <laughs> and um, one day, she went into the back, into the little kitchen area, and found me spark out on the floor, <laughs> absolutely out altogether, uh, picked me up, rushed me to the, the doctor, who, who basically said, um, he just needs to sleep it off. And when he wakes up, he'll have a, a head like a bear. <laughs> I've been dibbling into the, the wine that was in the fridge that were, was for the customers. So that was my my first path um, along the lines of being an alcoholic. Oh, that's great. Fun. That's great. Great story. So for those in our audience that might not know the, the, the infamous, wonderful, amazing Videl Sassoon, we've had both Elon and um, Eden on the show in the past, but can you sum up um, who he was and why his contribution is so important to the industry? Well, I think for probably my family story and Vidal and how I entered the industry kind of frames your, your question about mm -hmm. Vidal and his, 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 his stature within the industry. Um, yeah, my mum, as, as I mentioned earlier, was really going nowhere fast, mm -hmm. both financially and creatively. She wasn't charging very much money for hairstyles. And um, both creatively and inspirationally and financially, she was pretty much up against a, a brick wall. Right. Um, but she had the good sense to not know what she didn't know. And um, she picked up magazines and, and newspapers and looked in at what was going on in the big wide world, and particularly in London. Mm -hmm. um, for people who are not familiar, London really is the capital city of the world when it comes to hair. And um, she saw work that was being done by a person in London who was moving away from bouffant, moving away from hairstyles, and teasing hair and moving into really cutting hair with angles and lines and geometry and bringing that height of the, the bouffant and the, the puffiness of the bouffant, bringing it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wrote to this man and said, I really like what you're doing. Would you please teach me? Mm -hmm. And this man wrote back and said, um, sure, come and see me. Um, I'll be happy to interview you, you for a job as an apprentice. And she wrote back and said, thank you very much, but... Um, I have a small child, mm -hmm. I have a salon, three chairs that didn't match, um, but I will sweep your floor, I will make coffee, I will make sandwiches, I will shampoo, I will help out. Um, if in exchange you can teach me when you're teaching your own apprentices, mm -hmm. teach me to, to cut hair. And um, this man wrote back, and this is before faxes, by the way, and right, emails right. and SMS and WhatsApp. Um, he wrote back, and I'm sure he was fed up of hearing from this crazy woman, and said, sure, come and see me. Right. So she left me with two neighbors um, mm -hmm. um, ne next door, um, closed the salon. Where she got the money from to get on a bus to go from the, the north of England to, to London, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't know anybody, and she did exactly that for three months. She, she swept up and made sandwiches and 
made coffee and shampooed and helped out. And in exchange, this man taught her how to cut hair, which was this new revolutionary approach to, to hair. And um, at the end of the three months, she said to this man, I, I really appreciate this, thank you. I'm going back to my salon, three chairs that didn't match. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pick up my child, who's with the neighbors, and um, I'm going to throw away my rollers. I'm going to throw away my razor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw away teasing hair. And I'm going to convert all my clients to this new approach to, to hair that you're doing that entails geometry. Mm -hmm. And um, she said to him, you know, you have one salon. It's very successful. It's here on Bond Street in London. Have you ever thought that there's hundreds, maybe thousands of hairdressers who would dearly love to learn what I've learned for the last three months? Right. Why don't you open an academy? Mm -hmm. Why don't you open a, a formal way of teaching this and have people pay to learn this? And um, this man's name is Vidal Sassoon, and I think the rest is pretty much history. Right, right. And so she she inspired him to start the first academy. I think I think my mother and, and lots of other people did. And, and Vidal, the man, I mean, his philosophy really very very to the day he died was, mm -hmm. was giving, mm -hmm. was sharing, and really not keeping what he had in his mind and what he had in his heart, not keeping it to himself. And um, that's something that really was, was quite infectious, right. certainly with me. Right. And, um, you know, that philosophy of, of really sharing what, what was going on rather than saying that this idea and this way is for me and me only and my business. But to answer your question earlier, Patty, I, I, think, I think one of the big things that really, really changed was the fact that, that in many ways Mrs. Smith, the, the, the customer, you know, she was shackled to the hairdresser in the sense that she was getting her hair done, um, you know, once, twice a week and set in rollers. And to one degree or other, her looking good really depended on going to the hairdresser to have her hair, quote, unquote, done. Right. And, um, you know, Vidal kind of looked at this and he thought, well, hang on a second. There's, there's, there's a social change with society. Women are going to work. They're no longer staying home. They can't really afford the time to go to the hairdresser every week. Um, you know, there's a, sh a social shift with how women are looking at their lives and how they're going to work and how they're running the household. And, um, you know, people are getting showers installed in their homes. I know that sounds stupid now, but people got bathed. They didn't really get showered. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that it, it, the, the whole idea of day, daily bathing is really something that happened in this century. It is. Mm-hmm. And, and Vidal's mindset was, well, hang on a second. You know, if you're going to wash your body once and twice a day, how about washing your hair once and twice a day? Right. But really washing it with products that's not going to strip the hair, that's not going to ruin the hair, that's going to be good for the hair, and also at the same time give that woman um, a cut, a color, and a style that suits them, that suits their hair type, that releases them from the shackles of the hairdresser and the roller set and the Jackie Onassis type of look and allow her to take care of her own hair and make herself look good uh, within, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes of doing her hair. Right. Which allowed her to then look after the household and raise kids, but probably more importantly, go into the workforce. Um, so it was a social revolution in many ways in addition to um, a, a fashion change. And, um, you know, birth control and goodness knows what else was all happening at the same time. Right, absolutely. And everything kind of aligned with fashion and society. And, um, you know, again, for someone listening to this who's younger, they might think, well, that sounds really peculiar, but that was the norm. Is typically, you know, in the 60s, women stayed at home and raised children. Right. And they, they cooked and they ironed. There wasn't dry cleaning and microwaves. Right. An entirely different... Convenience. Right. Entirely different time. And, and so, so fast, um, fast forward, what, at what age did you get to a point where you made a decision to enter the industry? Well, I think I, I, I entered, in many ways, I think, Patty, I, I entered the industry when I was born in the sense that I, you know, I kind of was around it all of the time. Right. And growing up, I watched the trials and tribulations of, of my parents um, owning and operating a hair salon, employing people, mm -hmm. training people, 
And um, I watched the wonderful, wonderful world of customers, of clients, mm-hmm. and really sort of was absolutely enamored by, um, by women mm-hmm. and by watching people coming and getting their hair done and this wonderful, wonderful relationship between the stylist and, and, and the woman and how there's that trust and how there's that loyalty that's involved with that, in both directions, by the way. Right. And um, I was absolutely fascinated by it. And then again, as I got a little bit older, I, kind of, I was fascinated too by the fact that, um, you know, one didn't necessarily need to go to university for, for, for five to seven years and, um, you know, be in financial debt to be successful. Um, you know, I'm not particularly academically smart, academically clever, mm-hmm. but um, I've got a great lifestyle. Right. And there are thousands and thousands of others who, um, you know, have got the same lifestyle, and they've got that through um, relating to people, um, taking care of people, um, making people look fantastic, and, and that's the wonderful, wonderful world that you and I know um, as the beauty industry. Right, absolutely. And so you, what, when you decided in 1980, I guess, you entered the industry, and the term um, in, your, in your bio is uh, Vidara. That, to explain to our audience what that is. Well, you almost got it right, Patty. Vidra. Vidra, okay. It's a French word. <laughs> okay. And it, it, the word means to observe, okay. to watch. And um, basically, the, the, the two ways to enter the craft in, in the United Kingdom is either through an apprenticeship, which is typically someone who's 16 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's typically anywhere between two and three years of, of assisting and apprenticing um, under a master or on, on, in, a, in a salon. Um, and then the other alternative route is for someone who's already done that, who's a little bit older, mm-hmm. who's got a little bit more experience, and that program is typically six to nine months and that's the route that I went because I was able to go on the fast path because of my experience of working in my parents right right so I didn't show up at Vidal's salon um, as, a, as a brand new school leaver as a 16 year old I started when I was 19 right and um, joined as a Vardra and had a wonderful wonderful experience working on customers taking care of clients in um, in London, uh, in the Vidal Sassoon Salon in London. Right. And um, right from the very, very outset, Patty, I really wanted to learn my trade on Mrs. Smith and doing customers and doing clients. But my end goal was really being able to be in a position where I could, and I think the American phrase is pay it forward. Mm, mm-hmm. I wanted to be able to work with other hairstylists. Right. I wanted to work with, with salon owners. And as much as I enjoyed Mrs. Smith and I enjoyed working on clients, um, really what I wanted to be able to do was to do the same thing for hairdressers and for salon owners that Fidel had done for my mother, who was a hairstylist and salon owner. Right. So right from the very get-go, my end goal was really to join Sassoon, to cut my teeth in Sassoon salons, but as quickly as possible... Uh, move over to Sassoon Academies and moving to um, a teaching position, an educational position, where, um, yeah, yeah, you pay it forward, Patty. Absolutely. So it's interesting to me, as I've had the opportunity to talk to some of the beauty industry's icon and elite, one of the common denominators for many of them is, tr- uh, is the training that you've led for the last 30 years, Sassoon Training. What is it about hair designs created with these principles that you've engineered and been teaching that gives some of these iconic images that we define as beauty? I think the secret to success for, for any, any stylist or any salon owner is really finding that, that perfect balance between, mm-hmm. um, between heart and eye and wallet. Mm-hmm. And I know that sounds peculiar, but really... Obviously, the thing that brings us to hairdressing in the first place is often the heart. It's the passion, and it's the drive to make people happy. It's the, the, the drive to really be able to work with people. And it, that's very, very unique. That, mm. doesn't, that doesn't exist in many crafts. Right. So that's one side of it, is the heart, mm. the emotion and the passion behind it all. 
And then I think the next thing is the eye, mm-hmm. and and really honing that eye to see balance, to see perfection, to see beauty, to see the technical side of an amazing color or an amazing haircut, for example. And then the next one is obviously translating that to the hands and, and having the craftsmanship and the actual technical abilities to see that vision, mm-hmm. but have the eye speak to the hand so that that can be executed and we, we really have a result. Um, but none of those three things, the, the, the heart, the eye and the hand, um, get very far um, unless that translates to the wallet, mm-hmm. dollars and cents. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, starving artists um, get incredibly skinny and thin. Right. <laughs> and eventually die. Right, absolutely. So it, it's finding that balance of, of those four things. And really, sort of, um, my goal has always been to inspire people and motivate people so that they've got that passion for what they do, that they believe in that. Right, and absolutely. And they really have that drive to want to do what they do. Um, and that's almost like the foundation. And then over a period of time, really training their eye to see and, um, and have that vision and really be able to see quality and see suitability and to see that what looks good. And then the technical side have then, you know, driving that into their hands and the scissors and the comb and the tint brush so they can physically do that. Right. Um, and, and finally bring it back around to a, a, a P&L where, um, you know, they're earning a fantastic living and they're driving a fantastic car and they're sending their children to university. Yeah, because at the end of the day, well, that's what we all want, is we, 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 we want to be around people who are successful. And it, it's, a, it's a circle because it's not only the hairstylist behind the chair who experiences that success, but also is then that inspiration to the client that's sitting in the chair as well. Absolutely, Patty. Yeah. So we're, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to um, continue this amazing story because there's so much more to talk about. Um, so stay with us. We will be right back. Shh. Over here. Here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET. They've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net Welcome back. You're listening to Radio A and B on HealthyLife.net. I'm Patty Smucker, and we're here with Stephen Moody, Dean of Wella Global Education Academy. So, um, 
Steve and I had an opportunity to work with one another for many years, as you heard in our earlier segment, and I was delighted in one of those events where you, uh, Stephen, were, were doing education. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, introduce you to a very special lady that I think you're still hanging out with today. Yes, I'm hanging out with her today. Her name was Maria Bernert when you introduced her to me, mm-hmm. and uh, she's moved from Bernert to Moody. <laughs> That's right. And so how many years have you, have you and Maria been married? Oh, we've been together now. We've been married now 21 years, but we've been together, I think it's 25 years. Wow, wow. And um, as well as being a wonderful mother and raising three fantastic kids, she's a fantastic um, hair colorist, um, which complements my cutting skills, so to speak. Um, So a nice partnership in more than one way. Exactly. Right, right. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. It's such an amazing journey, and you've been at the epicenter of really crafting hair design. Um, what, what does the Dean of Wella Global Education Academy job entail, and, and how do you spend your time? Well, as you can imagine, there are many customers throughout the world who receive um, services that entail Wella um, color. Uh, Weller styling products, uh, Weller treatments, uh, different Weller products. And um, obviously we want to make sure that those those stylists are making the most of those products, uh, getting the most out of them, and, um, and making the, those customers and delighting those customers to the 10th degree. Mm-hmm. So my job in a nutshell is to make sure that um, that those customers who are using our products are familiar and au fait with those products, um, have got lots of creative, motivational um, thoughts behind those products, mm-hmm. and um, are getting the most out of working with, with their customers. So in a nutshell, what, what I do is um, I'm really blessed in the sense that I get to travel the world, and I get to, um, to work with people who work for Weller, mm-hmm. or they are top artists for Weller, And um, I train those people, um, educate those people, inspire those people, um, who in turn create a trickle-down effect, which ultimately ends up with Mrs. Smith in the the salon, Mm -hmm. sitting in the chair and getting a fantastic hair color, hair style, um, hair cut, uh, and service from from a um, a stylist, a hairdresser, um, who is using Weller's products, right. or Sebastian, or Nioxin, or Clairol. There are many, many different brands underneath the umbrella of, of, of Weller. Right. And, um, yeah, that's ultimately what, what I do on a day-to-day basis. Right. Um, I sit in, in, in Woodland Hills in Los Angeles. Um, that's my headquarters. Um, it's the headquarters for North American um, Weller. Mm-hmm. Um, and about 50% of my job is in North America. And... Um, and the other 50% is, is overseas. And I've just had the pleasure, Patty, of returning from Rio. Wow. So you were there during the Olympics. I was there right as... I was literally leaving as, as everybody was arriving. Uh-huh. So I had a week in Sao Paulo and then a week in Rio. And um, I was very fortunate to, to look around and see all the wonderful um, setups that they have, the stadiums and all the preparation, etc., right before everybody arrived and uh, wow yeah it was amazing i can't i can't even i can't even imagine and and um steven as you um look at this team of 800 plus people um this is just a huge organization is it how does it feel to be working for such a big organization with Sassoon as large as this Oh, no. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I mean, the, the total Sassoon Academy education team probably was less than, um, yeah, I would guess it was less than 50 or 60 people. Right, right. So this is considerably larger. But then again, you know, Weller is considerably larger. Um, Weller's in, in just about every country in the world. Right. Uh, to one degree or other. Um, in some countries, Weller has a huge footprint, mm-hmm. um, North America being an example. And then in other countries, um, a little bit less, depending on um, you know what the market is in those particular areas. Um, last week, I was just in Mexico City, which was um, absolutely amazing, working with the women and the hairstylists, the customers and the hairstylists down in Mexico City. We did um, we did a show down there for about uh, 250 people, and then um, I got to do some some hands-on work with the top the top, top hairdressers of Mexico City, 
And then, um, and finally, I got to um, do some work with our own team. Mm-hmm. Um, in Weller, we call it capability building, which is my favorite part, is really working with our own internal team, which is super exciting. And again, to come back to what we said before, Pat, it's that thing of paying it forward. Right, it's right. really giving people um, the inspiration and, and the motivation and the technique to be able to then go on and make others happy. Right. And so who keeps you motivated and inspired? What, what get, where do you get the juice to keep giving back and paying it forward? That's a really good question, Patty, and I get asked that all of the time. And it's a peculiar answer that I'm going to give you, but it's really, it, it's the hairstylist that I'm working with. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm 56 years old, Patty, mm-hmm. and I'm often teaching people that are 18 and 19 years old. Yes. And um, they motivate me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a different 15, 16-year-old to what I taught 30 years ago. It's a different animal. It's a different person. You know, they're inspired and they, they, they listen to and pay attention to different things. So I'm actually motivated by the people that I'm around, and that's another reason why I left so soon and I joined Weller, is I really wanted to be a, a, a small fish in a very, very big pond because um, I'm, I'm constantly feeding my soul, and uh, I don't think I ever want to be a big fish in a small pond because um, I want to receive as much as I give, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And in those circumstances, that I'm able to do that, and I'm, I'm, I learn every day, Patty. Absolutely, I, it, it sounds like it, and it sounds like. I mean, I've m- known you for many years, but to hear the excitement in your voice, you know, a lot of uh, people in the in professionals in the beauty industry think large corporations. They're not real loyal to the little salon owner and stylist, but it seems to me that that's changing. Do you see that, and, and from your vantage point, and if so, how 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 do you see the change happening? No matter how big the company is, it still has to be um, a force of individuals. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, again, I can only speak for Sassoon and, and Weller, because over the last 36 years, I've only had two jobs. Right. I've only worked for two groups of people. Mm-hmm. And um, those two organizations really are very, very good examples of, of community and, and, and family. And I'm sure there's people listening to this this broadcast who are new to the hair industry or maybe even thinking about entering the hair industry. Right. And one of the things that I would really recommend and suggest is to, is to seriously look at the concept of joining an organization, of joining a team. Now, whether that team is a team of people in a hair salon or it's a team of people in a hair salon that are related to a manufacturer or it's a team as in intercoffure. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I truly believe, Patty, that, that, that our craft, our industry, it's football. Mm-hmm. It's not golf. Right. Absolutely. And, and football, there's an offense and there's a defense and there's a coaching team and there's a physio team and there's a cheerleading team. Um, it's not really one man with a set of clubs. Absolutely. Knocking a ball around by himself. And, that- and um, the best teams in the world really rely on each other. Right. And support each other. And um, that's certainly Sassoon and, and Weller. Right. That's a great point and a great analogy that, it is, that our industry is football and not golf. It is a team sport. And on that note, we're going to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to um, learn a little bit more about what it means for a consumer to go into a salon and have a transformable uh, experience in the salon by being part of a, a team environment. So stay with us. We'll be right back. the thing about beauty it's pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we're all about the pretty making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine we have essentially everything you need and americanmadebeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the u.s of a imagine everything you need from the best hair skin and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we also think you're pretty important so visit americanmadebeauty.com browse buy learn americanmadebeauty.com 
For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call EarthChannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I'm your host, Patty Smucker, and we're here with Stephen Moody, Dean of the Wella Global Education Academy. This is the section that we call Beauty That's Soul Deep, where we, when we're going to focus on the soul of the customer experience when visiting a professionally trained salon experience. Stephen, at the start of both of, of, of the show, we talked about the salon environment in the, in the 60s where the client was shackled to their hairstyle. Tell us a little bit about what's changed and what you see happening today. Well, I think one of the things that's really key at the moment, Patty, is um, I know this sounds very obvious, but f- from a customer standpoint, uh, I think it's super important that they receive when they go into that salon a, a very solid and in-depth consultation Mm -hmm. and um, you know I'm a great believer myself and the the Weller the Weller philosophy is really to look at hairstyles on clients with a view to them really being very very um, tailor-made or in English we would say the word bespoke okay Um, bespoke relates to tailoring and Mm -hmm. making a suit that really fits the individual Mm -hmm. and the cut of that suit fits that person's body and the color of that suit fits their needs, and that the pockets and the buttons and everything is really very tailor-made to that individual. Mm-hmm. And um, a big thing that we're pushing at the moment is Weller, uh, Weller is driving that, that consultation. So every client, every time, going into every stylist, they get a consultation that really digs into who is that individual woman. What is her lifestyle? Um, what is her, her habits with styling her hair every morning? Is it 30 seconds or is it 30 minutes? Um, what is her salon visitation habits? Um, you know, does she come to the salon once a week or does she come to the salon once a year? Right. Um, really, what, what is her, her, her habits with, with her lifestyle? Is she a sporty person? Is she a conservative person? Is she a more avant-garde person? Who is that person? And I would prompt every client going to a salon to really look to make sure that they're receiving that. Mm -hmm. Now, this is before the shampoo. Right. This is before the color. This Mm -hmm. is before the haircut, before the blow dry. So that that stylist is really looking at that person and they're asking questions. And they're, more importantly, they're making suggestions. Right. At the moment, as we all know, fashion 
um, we don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that fashion goes around in circles. You know, a hemline goes down, and then the next season it comes up. Right. Or it progressively goes down, and it progressively comes up. Um, hair's the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, hair gets longer, then it gets shorter, then it gets textured, then it gets straighter. Um, and at the moment, we've all seen this long, flat-ironed, centre-part in long hair down, past the elbow type of style. That in many ways, Patty, I think for Mrs. Smith, mm -hmm. for, for an average client out there, mm -hmm. um, it's a difficult hairstyle to wear. Right. Uh, not all of us are, are 19 years old mm -hmm. and the front cover of Vogue. And, um, you know, those hairstyles are difficult to wear. But it's our hairstylists that need to be prescribing alternatives. It's not the client that needs to be prescribing the alternatives. Right. And while it's all well and good for, for a client to take a photograph and come up with suggestions, the stylist really is in the driving seat. And I would really encourage every client um, to really look for that from the hairstylist, for them to be suggesting um, alternative shapes, alternative lengths, alternative textures, and of course, alternative colors. Right. And, and Stephen, do you think that, that when you mentioned in our previous segment about the idea that, that, that our craft, our industry is football, not golf, it's a team sport, do you think that the client finds this kind of in-depth, consultative um, environment in a, in a team environment um, versus someone who's doing their hair in their home or in their, in the, in their kitchen? Well, I, I think it's more conducive to, to really a more bespoke um, service mm -hmm. is when a client goes into a professional establishment, mm -hmm. they go into a professional hair salon, and, um, you know, in, in some establishments, you know, there may be people who cut and color hair and do nails, um, but in other establishments, there might be um, people who specialize in nails mm -hmm. or specialize in massage or specialize in coloring hair right. or specialize in cutting hair. Um, no matter the degree of speciality, I think when a customer can go into a professional environment and they can receive that kind of service, it's going to be so much more in depth. It's going to be so much more in detail. And, um, you know, that if they were to get their, their, their hair colored from a, from a, a box color in a, in a drugstore and do it in the bathroom. Right, right. I mean, ultimately, um, you know, again, for the, for the general public listening to this, you know, hairstylists really do look at skin tones and skin color and eye color. They look at bone structure. And as I mentioned, lifestyle and really prescribing a, a look that really fits that individual is something that a, a, a professional um, hairstylist really can perform and, um, you know, can make the, di the, 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 the whole difference between a look working and not. And, um, and obviously, you know, money comes into this. Some, some, some clients can afford a higher-end service and some a lower-end service. But even, um, you know, s salons that really offer um, m more reasonably priced um, services, obviously, the, you know, they're at an advantage to where, again, you're in the right environment, right. using the right products and the right, the right consultation and the right processes to be able to um, get a great look. And, and transform. I mean, literally a hairstylist can transform your look. And, and, and it's really about having the, 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 the trust and the loyalty uh, with the stylist. Ta talk to us a little bit about that transformation that can take place in a client's environment. Well, I, I just literally, I think I mentioned earlier, I, I just came back from Brazil, and we did about, um, in Brazil, I think we made over probably about 45 people mm -hmm. in, um, in the two weeks that I was down there. And the class that I was teaching is called Color, Cut, Finish, Transformation. It's called Triple Craft, Cut, Color, Finish. And it's really digging into this in-depth, suggestive, consultation process now obviously in brazil there's a lot of flip-flops mm -hmm. and there's a lot of long hair and beach type looks particularly in rio um and you know when you when you talk to a client and you ask them about what their wishes are with their hair it's typically um you know to cut off a quarter of an inch of the hair and um and no color or just long nothing sun-kissed type color but when you dig down why, they, it's very interesting. Clients really don't know why they want that. And I think very often they want 
a nothing haircut or they want a nothing colour because the hairstylist has never suggested anything else. And um, it was really funny, particularly in Rio, where there is that beach type of, we're seeing it on the Olympics. There's that volleyball beach type of look. Um, it's very interesting when you when you suggest something that there's an alternative. They're all over it, mm -hmm. and you can show them pictures, and you can really fit that and tailor make that look to their individual lifestyle. And that really is the key, Patty, to fitting it to the individual. Right, absolutely. And as a client, a friend of mine said, I want my hairdresser to make me a new me, and I haven't found that for a long time. And it really is about that client relationship and that professional having the confidence to make those recommendations, but the client also trusting. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the industry, talk specifically to the licensed professional, and talk about some uh, thoughts that Stephen has about what's ahead. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands, that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. You Samsonite, you know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget, take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey, a pleasant one, with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. You are listening to Radio AMB, where we share the secrets behind the beauty industry. Our program sponsor today is Free Your Main. You can find Free Your Main at anthropology stores and online. Free Your Main is a hair care and body care line based on baobab oil. I'm Patty Smucker, and we're here with Wella's Global Education Academy Dean, Stephen Moody. Stephen, from the days when uh, the Sassoon artists set women's hair uh, and shampoos and set uh, and going into the salon on a weekly basis, we've seen a lot of innovation. What do you see ahead in the beauty industry? Well, I, I think one of, the, one of the new things, obviously, is I, I work for a color company, so I'm most visible to the, the, the technologies and the innovation that's coming down the pipeline with color. And, um, you know, we're able to use colors in a much more mild way. We're able to use colors where we really take care of the hair. Mm -hmm. And we're able to, um, I mean, magma is one example of, of one of our new and innovative colors that literally lifts hair, the level of the hair, and deposits at the same time. That traditionally would have been a two-step process mm -hmm. of, of, of lightening the hair or bleaching the hair, um, followed by then a deposit process. 
Um, so there's all kinds of, of technologies, and Magma is one where we, it's a one-step process that was too. So there are many technological innovations, but I think one of the more um, in-your-face um, innovations, if you will, is really looking at today's clientele. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm speaking now, Patty, mainly to the professional. Right. But um, I think it's fair to say in this, this day and age that the, the iPhone and flip-flops and banana clips have become more important mm -hmm. than really, quote-unquote, um, dressing up. Right. So there definitely has been a direction to dress down, which mm -hmm. has been a strong fashion statement. And um, I think we mentioned in the other segment, Patty, seg um, fashion just simply goes around in ever-decreasing circles. Right. And I think there is a, definitely a direction to move away from the longer bedraggled center part in elbow length, no color hair, mm -hmm. to move into something that's a little bit more hot couture, right. that's a little bit more, um, has a little bit more dimension. Mm -hmm. and most importantly of all, one of the things that I'm really working with and teaching at the moment is this idea of transformation. Mm -hmm. Through a suggestive and driven consultation, really analyzing who is that person that's in your chair. Mm -hmm and really tailor making, making a haircut, um, hairstyle, and color. They're all dovetails together with each other, but most importantly of all, dovetails into that woman. Who is she? What's her lifestyle? What's her job? What's her habits? What's her spending habits? With a view to, A, making her look fantastic and more contemporary, mm -hmm. but B, at the same time, Patty, really um, coming up with a regimen to where that woman's visiting our hair salon on a more regular basis. Because let's face it, a woman with elbow length hair um, and no layers, um, she can tip her head upside down and cut her own hair. Right. She can go to the drugstore and buy box product and comb that through the ends of her hair and, um, you know, she doesn't need us. She's not sending our children to university. But fashion-wise, you know, that's going in a different direction. And there's definitely a movement towards more structured hair and, 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 and colors and cuts that fit together. And particularly something that we're pushing at Weller is often two, three, four colors all on one head so that the color really plays a trick on your eye and it complements the haircut. And it makes certain parts of the haircut recede and it makes certain parts of the haircut come out towards your eye. Right. And vice versa, the, the haircut does exactly the same thing to the color. And that really enables, to re enables us to really transform people, enables us to really look at hair as a three-dimensional object. And again, I keep coming back to this. It's really, it's that idea of it being tailor-made, Patty, right. and, um, and being bespoke. And and so what do you what do we say to you, the licensed professional about the idea of this opportunity and how they capitalize it in the in the in the time when from a society standpoint people are dressing down, people are looking at independence and working um, in a an Ubering the beauty industry where they go to somebody's home and not really working as, as part of a team. Well, I think what we'd say to the professional is we've got to win that client back. Mm -hmm. It's not that client's job to come to us. It's our job to have them come to us. We've got to win that client over. And the first step, I think, on this whole journey is we've got to make sure that each one of those stylists that are in a salon that want to win that client back from the kitchen, from the living room haircuts, is really to... Um, you know, to be very well-rounded and well-educated with what it is that they're offering the client. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy for a stylist to offer a transformation and to suggest this and to suggest that, but not be able to execute it. Right. So again, I think we're coming back to that word, education. Mm -hmm. And the stylist really investing in themselves and investing in their education. A little bit like what my mum did in the early 60s. Right. You know, she took her, her tips and she took her extra, what little bit of extra money she had at the end of the week and stuck it in a jar, and she invested in education. When she came back from education, she then put the prices of her services up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, as a profession, we've really got to seriously look at, is are we really, really charging what we're worth? Right. And um, I think each individual hairstylist needs to answer that question themselves mm -hmm. on a one-on-one. -on -one. But, um, yeah, I, I think education is the heart and soul of all of this so that, 
you know, we as hairstylists, we're offering everything that we can to those individual clients and winning them back to where they belong, which is in a hair salon party. Right, absolutely. It's absolutely. funny, I, I got a card the other day from this girl who, um, I'm going to just read the card if you, if you don't mind. Sure. This came from, from someone who's, hair I just did recently and she said dear Stephen when you suggested a rock star haircut and chopped off 13 inches of my hair last year for charity little did we both know I'd go on a hair adventure full of an assortment of styles brackets yours the most memorable (laughs) the greatest gift you Carrera who's the lady that did the color and the Weller team gave me was the beginning of a truly the beginning of truly knowing who I am Mm. without my old long hair identity. Without it, I discovered a source of beauty and inspiration deep inside of myself that has helped me grow into the woman that I've become. I'm so grateful that I met you. For your information, I'll tell everyone about it. Smiley face. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and and that just is the ultimate paying it forward. Not only have you touched so many hairstylists in the world um, with your inspiration for over 30 years that you've been doing, but also being able to, you still touch Mrs. Smith. And that is just so incredibly exciting. And Patty, I've only been able to do that because of the people that I've met, such as you, the people that I've worked with, such as the thousands of hairdressers that I've been honored to share information with, and because of organizations like Vidal Sassoon and Weller. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for everything that you've done, and it's a joy having you here with us today. So that's going to wrap it up for us today. Um, Don't miss our program next week. And um, it will be a rather sporty event with Stephen McAllen, executive director of one of the largest non-hotel YMCAs in the United States. You'll learn how this 120-year-old organization is serving communities across America and Europe with programs for health and well-being from cradle to grave. Uh, don't miss that show. Send your questions and comments to requests at American Made Beauty. I'm Patty Smucker. You can hear Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. Thank you for listening to Radio AMB, where we think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. 